It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to... The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. If you want to help out this show and any other show on Southgate Media Group and you really don't have the extra money to do so, check this out. Go to southgatemediagroup.com. At the top, there's a link to Amazon. Click that, log into your Amazon, shop and buy like normal, and part of the money that you spend comes back to us to help us with our podcast. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow, and with me, is none other than your favorite podcaster, your favorite voice, the man who shakes mountains like they are dust in the wind, the man of steel, the Superman of red, Mr. James Cole. Dust in the wind, huh? <laughs> like, like, like Henry Cavill crashing through the mountains. <laughs> yes. Yes. Or Frank the Tank singing at Blue's funeral. <laughs> All right, so episode 13. Uh, fail safe. So let's just kind of get into things. All right. What we got going on. So we have Cal and Cal. <laughs> like how I did that. <laughs> Their names are pretty my close, aren't they? My cat is caught in it. Damn it, cat. I mean, dang it, cat. Uh, it's caught my cords wrapped up in it. My daughter wanted a cat. I got her a cat, people. I hate cats. Never wanted a cat, but I love my daughter. <sighs> Things you do for your children. Not yeah. put up with it. <sighs> I'm a good dad, I swear. Uh, but yeah, Tal and Cal, and we have a flashback of Tal and his fortress, and Tal's father, we learn that he has a crystal that was his mother's crystal, and the father will deny him the chance to ever see it. Uh, it talks about weakness, and I thought that was uh, pretty sad. Superman now has that crystal, which I'm hoping that he'll bring back around to help, you know, free Tal from being his father's influence in a D-bag. Yeah, he didn't destroy yeah, he, it like he did um, um, Jarrell's. Jarrell's. He expected him to. He told him to. He expected him to do it like I did first. That's not Nope. He takes the crap that people give him. And tries to turn around and do good. Um, Leslie Lar is still at large. I'll say that several times fast. <laughs> Leslie Lar still at large. Leslie Lar still. <laughs> Not too bad. It's kind of a tongue twist. Yeah, we, we need one more L in there. Right. Leslie Lar with Lois Lane and Lana Lang are shutting, <laughs> are still at large, leaving. <laughs> 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 Leaving long lines of legs. Uh, the DOD is shutting down the mines, and the school is holding a giant assembly. Um, and they're trying to come up with a story to, you know, pass on to, to tell. Uh, and the kids are both like, we're getting good at cover stories. And it's kind of like, yeah. Yeah. Um, now this is, so we're going to kind of try to stay on track here, uh, with a linear flow, but the mayor in true politician is a D bag because he's sitting there talking with Kyle and Lana about, Oh, I'm going to change the narrative and let people know you were trying to help the town. And then flash forward later. We hear the mayor talking bad about Kyle and Lana. And Lana confronts him about it. 
yeah, this is the um, this is the storyline that I was uh, kind of merging when I talked about last episode. That that the the blame for the Cushing uh, gives gives Lois something to do, and you know, I think it. I, their story helps Lois in this episode. Lois is having problems with that paper, the, the DVD, and Tony and stuff. And it, it gives her the chance to, to set things right with Christy's paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Christy's very... She feels very betrayed by Lois because Lois flat out lies to her about something. And... I get both viewpoints. Like, really, I get where Chrissy's coming from. But also, at the same time, I'm like, this is a story that is very close to Lois and her family. So, um, yeah. It's a, it's very interesting how that, you know, goes on in the episode. Because this is where I think I see it, where they're at the diner and Kyle confronts a couple of his people and they're like, oh, we thought the mayor talked to you about what's going on. And he's like, uh, yeah, you trying to get my job? And it definitely shows that the, the tension is rising for, for Kyle, you know, where, and I, like I've said all along, I like the way Kyle's been written. It feels very believable and a real character. Um, not, he didn't sway into that exaggerated where you're just like, all right, man, calm down. Or, so, he, he was, you know, mean, but at the same time, it kind of made sense because they, they made it, they gave us reason for everything. Uh, so Sarah is at school with Jordan, and now that it gets out that John's dad is or grandpa's the head of the DoD, some of the guys on the team are all excited, like, "Hey, man, grandpa's for the DoD." And then that uh, we'll just say T Waffle named Tegan is all up on John now, like, "Hey, man, hey, you wanna you wanna hang out?" Um, I'll skip school and hang out. So we have Jordan and Sarah skip the assembly and go for a walk through nature. Beautiful, beautiful walk, it looked like. And just kind of talk. And then we have Tegan and John go. And I like that John is, he's not, he's not buying her bull. You know, he's on guard. And we'll just kind of ride that thread for a moment. Is you know, she says to him, uh, oh, so you live around here. He's like, yeah, how do you know that? I might have overheard some things. So she's trying to dig into John, get information. She brings up his grandpa, brings up, you know, the situation, asks him what his thoughts are. And they go off and they're parked somewhere. And, um, She's just mining for information. John's like, why is it that you didn't really weren't interested in me until you found out who my grandpa was? So he wasn't buying her feminine bullcrap. I'm very happy that he wasn't buying it. Yeah, it was nice to see that he did just... Uh cute girl starts talking to him and flirting with him and, and he just he just spews the information exactly and you know because she had already appeared in an episode before where you know he tried to uh, he tried to like you know flirt with her or whatever and Sarah warned him multiple times to stay away from her you know John John's lonely <laughs> he doesn't really have any friends. He doesn't have his girlfriend anymore from Metropolis who, you know, left him. 
because even Tegan brings that up. Like, don't you have a girlfriend back in Metropolis? He's like, no. And then he starts walking home. I'm not sure how long of a walk that is, but yeah, he starts walking home. Now, let's jump back to probably one of my favorite parts of, of the episode, if not my favorite part, is Clark walks out to the barn with a plate, a home-cooked meal, and gives it to John. And I love it because he's like, he brings him a plate, and, uh, you know, he says to John, you know, you saved my life and everything, and you can eat here for free as long as you need to. Right. Uh, and I, I love seeing Clark do domestic stuff. Like, he made the kids lunches, he made, you know, food. Like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Superman. Well, at this point, Clark and still then, doesn't uh, have he, a job. because he, he volunteered. Yeah, for, for free for the football team. And now the Kents, the entire family is taking a hiatus from the football. Yeah. It's just, it's just too bad that right now Clark doesn't have, I don't know, a best friend who's a billionaire. Like, Hey, can I uh, borrow some money? Or, you know, go <laughs> right. grab a diamond and just, and just compress it and go sell it. Like, Hey, uh, <clears throat> that's probably what yeah. he's been yeah. doing. They're just, they're just not showing that side of super. Yeah, they, they don't know that they have a bunch of money saved up somewhere because he just sold diamonds. Well, he's been with been with Lois for 20 years now, right? Like, they've probably yeah, got a good roughly. savings going. They should. They should. They should. <laughs> but we know how life is. Um, but we see that John has his computer set up for monitoring Kryptonians and it goes off and it's Leslie and they both jump into action. Clark goes flying off. John suit boots up. They take off and we have a cool scene of like the DOD talking about her coming to try to break out edge and they're like counting down to impact and Superman flies and takes her. And then we have, uh, John and John Iron and Superman take down Leslie and they fist bump. That's my favorite part. Just bah, fist bump. I loved it. I mean, they've come a long way. <laughs> like, <laughs> now they're fist bumping. That was just, I don't know, it's good, man. It made me happy. Um, I really like, uh, they, they try to use the missile on Leslie and I really like Leslie's suit. I think her Kryptonian suit looks really cool, too. Yeah. So then we oh. get a scene where Sam talks about 7734 and how he's going to get rid of it and all of this because Superman proved, you know. But at the same time, I don't know if I believe Sam. I don't, I don't know if I believe that Sam would really get rid of the weapons, or if he's just saying yeah. it as means of trying to bring peace to Clark's mind. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's possible from what we know here, but this this time it's a tad different than he's been portrayed before. I mean, he said he's going to bury him in cement, drop him at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, except for a couple to keep uh, Tao and Leslie um, under control. So, and then we find out, so Lana, or Jordan and Sarah are walking and get arrested for trespassing. Not not for skipping school, but just trespassing. And Lana gets a call, Lois gets a call. Meanwhile, Lana has no job. Technically, Kyle Trespassing, no apparent. Job. Yeah, trespass, trespassing, apparently, where everybody goes. Yeah. Like, and that just probably shows it's because it was Sarah. And even the police yeah. and everybody is angry because they're blaming Lana and Kyle. Um, so then we have, so we have, you know, they get their moms come and get them out of jail. And it's when then that 
Lana sees the mayor running his mouth and being the two-faced person he is. Ha, <laughs> two-faced. Um, but we get a very interesting conversation between Tao and Superman when Superman tells him they have um, Leslie. And he talks about losing control. Um, it's very interesting because it makes sense that, you know, Superman is always on guard for everything he does. Mm -hmm. And just the chance to kind of let go for a moment, it would feel good and relaxing, but he doesn't want to give in to that. So it definitely makes sense in the character. And Clark's the one that says he wants, he doesn't want Sam to get rid of all the weapons just in case. Yeah. That if there was any, if Lois anything like, were to happen. Um, you know, we, we get the great, we get the great scene of, <clears throat> what do you call it? Uh, when, when they come, they're all kind of coming home and they're like, Jordan, why aren't you at school? Or Jonathan, why aren't you at school? And he's like, uh, <laughs> you know, and Lois is like, go upstairs. And she's like, yelling at him and then yelling at Clark because Clark's, you know, I don't want Sam to get rid of the weapons. She's like, what? And she go upstairs it, it, without him looking, or without even looking that he's still back there. Yep. It's totally a mom um, move. Oh, it totally is. The writing for the show is great. Uh, and so what they end up deciding on is that they're going to entrust the weapons to who? To John Henry Irons. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed um, to say long pot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't mimic Jeff Gold. No, I know. I'm just glad you caught the reference. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> For those listening, that's a friend's reference in Joey reading his script incorrectly. And here's more where Kyle talks more about moving to another town. Um, and it, I, I put my notes, oh, Granville? <laughs> Just, you know. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, they're going to trust John Henry with the weapons. And he's like, wow, I, I don't know what to do. Like, he's overwhelmed. Um, and the one thing we I wanted to mention it was John Kent mentioned that he always looks up to his mom and that he actually dressed up as his mom for career day and Tegan said she did too which I, I call BS but you know whatever um, but then we have the scene that where so basically, what I what I believe has happened is Tao has taken all of the consciousness inside of himself. Yeah, and he's sitting there, and he breaks out of the the prison. The kryptonite has no effect on him. He breaks out of the prison, and it's a very like oh snap kind of thing. Yeah, he he has become the eradicator. He has become the eradicator now. Uh. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that. yeah yeah he, he's become the eradicator it's, um i think i think that's definitely what's happened you know he uh uh with the solar flare he charged it up and, and absorbed all the consciousness of krypton in did you get these scenes of him rubbing his forehead and well because when he art when he's arguing with his father in the in his fortress, uh, his father's telling him that his way is the only way. Like he doesn't care about his son's um, his son's existence at this. Point. Like you know, all all of the all of the pain and the and the training he's gone through. It it he doesn't care about how his son feels. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. he, he wants his son to be exactly how he is. He is. he wants him to be. And uh, he tells him that his way is the only way. He's the only one. You know. So 
and then at the end, he's like, well, at the end of the last episode, it is. That's what I think, yeah. Cause he's the eradicator. I mean, his eyes are glowing blue. His hands are glowing blue. Yeah. And then the last part of the episode, he's basically up at the sun, absorbing everything. Um, and that's how the episode ends, is just him outside the sun, absorbing yeah, they're searching him. They're searching for him across the planet, and they can't find him. That's because he's at the sun absorbing, absorbing solar power. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. awesome looking, though. Pretty cool effect. So, what did you think about as overall of this episode? Uh, this, uh, this one, this one was a really good episode. Um, the last one was pretty good. I think this one better. Um, I like, I, I like that this, this show is not wasting much time. I like that each one, you know, when it, when it needs to, especially this being second to last episode, because this coming Tuesday is the penultimate episode. Um, this is the second mm-hmm. to last episode and, and. They're starting to ramp things up. Only got two more episodes. So, I, I think it's very good. And it's really cool if we're going to get the Eradicator. I'm... I mean, yeah. Because that is like one of the uh, most like, what exactly does that character do? Characters? What 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 the Eradicator do? Yeah, because it always seems like no one quite understands him. Like there's like the simple version in comics. There's the over like explained version, and you're like trying to yeah. piece together what exactly it, he is. I, so this one, I think, I think this one, in my opinion, before we get, actually see what he is, I think this one is kind of a an amalgamation of like the previous one where he was like where he was a computer, where he was, I don't want to say he was like a hard light construct, like, um, like the return of Superman, um, the protector Mm -hmm. of, I mean, he's, he's being, that's what he's trying to do is be the protector of Krypton. He's trying to make sure that Krypton is an eradicated universe. Uh, So, Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that part is kind of like always the same. Um, but then in the new 52, there were, there was what seemed to be like a biological eradicator that would emerge, emerge from a planet's core when, when the end of the planet was near. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know, maybe, maybe a little bit of both kind of uh, a biological person mixed with the eradicator technology and, and housing, you know, all the consciousness in there. Krypton. I mean, it's, it's a good explanation. So we will all see how and what he looks like coming up soon. Any other final thoughts? No, I just I just can't wait. I wish I wish they were both episodes were on this Tuesday. Get this Tuesday and then next Tuesday, the seventeenth, and that'll be the end season. Wow, already that time. Yeah, well, one month from this coming Friday, the thirteenth, it's going to be. They're going to be uh, uh, beginning production on season two. That's awesome. Yes, it is. It feels like things are kind of uh, getting back on track. So it's just keeping. All right. Well, that wraps up our discussion for Superman and Lois. Soon we will have a our discussion for the Suicide Squad. And we'll see what everyone thinks about that. Just remember, everybody. Look up in the sky.
The Krypton Report is part of the Southgate Media Group network of podcasts. If you have an interest, check out Southgate Media Group to see if your podcast is there. I bet it is. At the Southgate Media Group website, you can sign up for our newsletter. You'll get info on all the shows and you can find what you want. You'll also find links to our sponsors where you can get great products and support the podcast. Also, our book, Pod Life, Podcasting Stories. It's a great book. Check it out. It's nice to hear where people come from and why they do what they do. And remember...